welcome in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our worship here at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. We have entered into a new season of the church. We are post-Pentecost, or, or the Sundays after Pentecost, which was last Sunday. Uh, some would call it ordinary time of the church because it stretches for a long time, this ordinary time. We go all the way uh, from now until Christ the King Sunday sometime in November in the season of Pentecost. But today is not an ordinary Sunday. <clears throat> uh, today is Trinity Sunday. It is the Sunday where we focus our attention on the mystery that is God and the understanding of God as creator, as father, as son, the savior, and the Holy Spirit or the sanctifier. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is Trinity Sunday today. It's also not ordinary because we um, have a message from the Bishop of the ELCA, Bishop Eaton, has sent out with the marvels of te technology, we can do this, has sent out a, a message for all of the churches in this country uh, for this Trinity Sunday. So that's gonna happen. Um, you can stay on after my chat to hear um, a message from the Bishop, and I hope you do that. A uh, couple of, just a couple of announcements, things uh, to know. The Finance Committee will have its monthly meeting this Tuesday. And also we want to uh, send our congratulations and our blessings to all those who graduated uh, this year. And St. Luke has a graduate that you all know, uh, West Harold graduated this year. So. I obviously did not know Wes, but I have heard stories about him and how wonderful a person he is. Um, so we rejoice uh, with him and his family uh, on his graduation. And then please remember after the service, uh, we'll have a coffee chat together and I will talk with you more about specifics on the reopening of the church for worship. So I hope you stay tuned for that as well. Let us begin our worship service. Thank you.
Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I said in my announcements <clears throat> that this is not an ordinary time, that this Sunday is not an ordinary time, and we are, we are not living in an ordinary time right now in this country. We are living in a time of great turmoil and conflict and feelings of injustice and a lot of stuff is going. So we're not only dealing with a pandemic, but we're dealing with the turmoil within our country. So I thought we should hear these words from Psalm 46 and then say a prayer. God is our refuge and our strength, a present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Behold, he who makes wars to cease, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And let us pray. God, our refuge and our strength amid all the turmoil of today. Your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of trouble and danger, be to us a sure guardian. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom. Comfort those in distress. Help us to confront one another without hatred and to work together for peace and justice and respect for all people. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And now God speaks to us in scripture reading, preaching, and song. Alleluia! Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Have you heard the phrase <clears throat> that you cannot choose your family? That you can't pick who your relatives are? For good, or in some cases, unfortunately, for bad, you are stuck with them. Biologically, the relationships cannot be undone. And even legal relationships like a marriage or civil unions or adoptions cannot be entirely dissolved. So you are a son or you are a mother or you're a second cousin or you're an adopted daughter or you're a great grandpa or you're an aunt or a brother-in-law and any number of relationships that we have with others. And we pretty much are stuck we're stuck in those relationships. And how wonderful it is to anticipate family members yet to be, as Pam and I are right now, as we await another grandbaby to come into our family. You were born and you live and you will die in a family. You have no choice in the matter, it just is. You are a leaf on some family tree. And a relationship means that we belong together. And it means loving the other people in that relationship. Today is Trinity Sunday. And the Trinity, God, is a great mystery that we can never fully understand. We can never fully understand 
who, or maybe better what, God is. The Trinity is one way for us to kind of grab hold of some understanding of God as creator, as parent, as father, as the redeemer, as son, as Jesus, and as sanctifier, as the comforter, as the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And I like how Bishop Eaton, in her message to the church today, describes the Trinity. She says the Trinity is a relationship, and that it is a relationship grounded in love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is their relatedness that we see. God is not gender, God is not a hierarchy. God the fa is Father because of the relationship of Father to Son. The same goes for the Son in relationship to the Father. And the Spirit comes from the Father and the Son, and they are all united in love. And we believe this because when you think about it, much of scripture is all about relationships. God's relationship to people and people's relationship to one another. There's God's relationship to the creation. We heard this morning from the book of Genesis, the story of the beginning of everything. And there's a relationship between God and all the world. And on the sixth day, we hear of God's relationship that he created with humanity. God wanted to be in relationship with life in this world, and God created humans, men and women, human beings created in God's image. And just like all children are the image of their parents, we, the children of God, are in the image of God. And the Bible is the story of relationships of family, the story of Abraham and Sarah's family, the story of Moses' family, David's family, and God was incarnate into a Jewish family, born of Mary and the child named Jesus. So here is what we are to remember on this Trinity Sunday. That during this time of terrible strife and struggle within our country, that all people are created by God, children of God, and related to one another. Endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is why 76 years ago tomorrow, today, depending on when you're watching this, young men of this country landed on the beaches of Normandy. It was to stop the evil of Nazism that was overtaking Europe, an ideology that believed people are not created equal, that there are superior people over others. <clears throat> and that is why there are people peacefully demonstrating in our streets right now, young and old, black, brown, and white, marching to remind this nation that all people deserve respect and justice and equality. We may not always get along with each other, just like in our own families, but we need to strive and sometimes fight for justice and equality for all God's children. This week I read from the modern prophet Martin Luther King Jr., who in 1964 wrote these words. I submit this is the challenge facing the church, to be as concerned as Christ about the least of these, our brothers and sisters. And we must do it because in the final analysis, we are all to live together, rich and poor, educated and uneducated. Somehow we are tied in a single garment of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. This is the way God made the world. We must all learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we will all perish as fools. 
I want to finish with a story that I think illustrates God's family together. It comes from the experience of a Presbyterian minister whose name I have lost. It's an experience that he had in a Chicago deli. <clears throat> he said he spent most of his life in a small town in Ohio and was not used to being around people that were different than he was. And during this first trip to Chicago for a convention, he decided to go out for lunch and rather than remain in his hotel, and he found a small deli down the street. When he went in, he was overwhelmed by what he saw. Behind the counter was an older Jewish couple running the deli. At one table sat two African-American men who were having lunch. Next to them was an Asian family, and at the counter, a couple of women with scarves tied her on her head. His first reaction was to check to see if he still had his wallet. The second was to leave because he felt so uncomfortable. But then he realized everyone was talking to one another as friends, it seemed. The man behind the counter had everyone laughing at his jokes. And then it hit him. This must be what God wants us to be like. This must be what heaven is like a place where all God's children will eat together as a family and see each other as brothers and sisters, children of God. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the first chapter of Genesis and reading through the first four verses of chapter two. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called the night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. 
So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> Our psalm today is Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? human beings, that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading is from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 13. And Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace 
will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God of community, 
You form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. We pray especially for Sheila, Coral, Ed, Sherry, Gary, Mary, Carol, Marcia, Wyman, Mary, and Jack. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel, renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe, globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the land with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own that also we estranged and dying might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and and this meal your Holy Spirit whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our prayers and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessings until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all honor and glory is yours, O God, O living one, 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thanks be to God. 
So welcome, welcome to our coffee time together. I'm glad you joined me for this. As I said in, oh, Pam says hello, say hello. Hello, hello everybody. And so, someone asked me this past week, uh, why doesn't Pam join me on this side of the camera? <laughs> And she said she would, but she has to go to the hairdresser first, so <laughs> we don't know when that will be. <laughs> so, maybe soon. Maybe soon. Um, as I said in the worship service, it's, we're living through a troubled time in our country's history. Um, but I, I believe that, that God will get us through and, and maybe that we will be in a, in a better place. Um, through all of this um, trials and tribulations that we go through but we want to keep in our prayers those who have been harmed in any way uh, during this past week uh, pray for healing and pray for peace as well and keeping peace so um, today I wanted to talk to you about um, <laughs> reopening the church for worship I heard someone say once that Lutherans do not like change and I'm part of the, I'm a Lutheran in that way as well I'm not good at change either but things are going to be different for a while um, so you're gonna have to be flexible we're gonna all have to make sacrifices for us to safely return if, if we are not able to do that then we probably should keep you know at home and, and watching the services online, which we will continue to do. Once we have worship in the sanctuary, uh, we will be recording the, a service, the service, and sending that, that out um, as well. <clears throat> so people who don't want to come back, who are high, even higher risk than just being over 60 or whatever, um, or if you feel sick in any way, then you can stay home and still worship with us. So, it's a complicated matter. There's a lot of moving parts we are learning. And Worship and Music had their meeting uh, this past Monday and had a really good discussion and really worked through some stuff <clears throat> and trying to think these things through. But there's a lot of moving parts that have to be put into place for everything to work out. Um, the sanctuary has already been... Um, made for social distance sitting and standing. Uh, the, the pews have blue tape on them where people can sit safely. Uh, you'll see that when you come to church. Uh, every other pew will be used. The pews that we use are the ones that do not have hymnals or anything in them. And that's for uh, marking that pew as a, as a pew to use and also for afterwards to easily clean that pew to disinfect it um, so let me go through that and, and you're gonna you're gonna get a, a letter a mailing about all of this all of these changes that we have to have to live through in order, order to get back to where we were although I don't know if we'll ever get back to to what once was normal and you got guidelines from the North Carolina Senate this week right uh, well, after the meeting <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they had um, the the synod had a Zoom meeting um, Tuesday night. Was that mm -hmm. Tuesday night that I that I went on, and Janet went on as well, and it was amazing. We the, the worship and music thought almost all of this through already. We were we we're on top of it, so so I was kind of proud about that. Um, anyway, so let me let me start like from the beginning. This is kind of how I did it with the the committee to think about you know, Sunday from when you arrive at church to when you leave church and how things will be. Um, arriving at church, uh, wearing a mask. So we all wear a mask. You'll come into the church, the off there'll be a place to put your offering. So we will not be taking offering during the service. Um, you will sit, so you won't, <laughs> You won't have your favorite spot to sit at. I mean, possibly that might happen, but most likely you will not. Uh, and we're asking people to sit from front, so we fill in front to back, so that we're not crossing over people. Um, households can sit together. 
we do have we have marked certain chairs that people can sit in safely so if you're single that might be a good place to go uh, during the service no singing although music will be provided uh, but the congregation will not be will not be singing hymns um, no well we'll pass <clears throat> we'll say the peace be with you and also with you uh, but no passing of the peace uh, obviously no shaking of hands um, we probably the first service for sure and then maybe we're not sh exactly sure and this is all all of <laughs> learning and process um, that we won't have communion the first Sunday communion just complicates things that are already going to be complicated for us um, so at least the first Sunday and maybe the first couple Sundays uh, and we're still trying to figure out how to safely commune as well um, and there's been some ideas on how to do that. Uh, Pam is shaking her head. No. Uh, Pam and I have had lively discussions as well <laughs> over these things. Because uh, I really want to get back to worship. And Pam is a nurse, an ex-nurse, and is worried about health issues and germs and all of that. Um, but we want to be as careful as possible. Worship, unfortunately, is is like one of the high risk things for us to do. That's why theaters, like think about this, they're not gonna open movie theaters up. That's gonna be the last possible thing because that's a bunch of people sitting together for a couple of hours. Very much like worship. It's the, it's the high risk thing to do. Going to the grocery store is, is a lot less risky than coming to worship. So we just have to be very cautious and careful about this. Unfortunately, that, that's what worship is. It's just what it is. So, uh, where did I leave off? Um, no offering during the service. You leave your offering. And then exit-wise, we're thinking that the, the left side, the pulpit side of the church, those folks uh, exit at the door, the bottom door there on the left side of the church to go out that door. And you leave from nearest to the exit to furthest. So, so if you're close to the exit, you get up first. And we may have the ushers help directing traffic for a while, or for a few Sundays. And then the people on the right side, the where the choir side of the church, they go back out the narthex, through the narthex. We also will have the doors open at the, at the beginning of the service, uh, so people do not need to be touching handles or anything like that. They suggest to have the doors open, if possible, all through the service, because the more the air gets circulated and moved, um, the better. That's just another safe thing to do, but I don't know with the heat and with the traffic noise from 17 that we will be able to do that. But we'll definitely have them open, standing open at the beginning of the church service and then at the end of the church service so we can just easily get out, get in and get out. And if you do have your own hand sanitizer. Yeah, so we'll have hand sanitizers. Bring your hand, a hand sanitizer. Um, we'll have hand sanitizer at all the e entrance points and exit points. But if you can bring your own, that would be if great. If you can bring your own, um, that would be good. Um, once we do have communion, one of the thoughts is that you bring your own bread from home and that we just receive the bread and we don't come up, uh, but we stay in the, in the pews and receive it that way. So that, that's a thinking and we're looking at other possible ways to do that. Um, oh, and then, oh, so even before you come to church, there will be a sign up. Uh, sign ups will be sent out through email to, uh, to everybody to sign up. We've got to limit the numbers of people to 50. Um, and we are all th all thought that, well, what if visitors show up? So the sign up for members probably will be 45, maybe. That, that's why it won't be 50 or 43 or something, because we're going to need to have some extra seats in case somebody does show up who's visiting. In fact, when we were video record today there was a, um, a man here i didn't meet him but catherine met him in the parking lot who was he, he's wants to explore the church come to the church yeah. he's he's new in he's the area for a church. And, yeah so he's looking for a church and she gave her all, all the information so that's going to happen especially in summertime i think so we have to be aware of that the other thing we talked about is and that we are now working on is the use of the fellowship hall that we can um get a, a large screen TV in here and then cast the service, since we're gonna be videotaping anyway, over here so that either, either 
overflow people that, that come to show up on a Sunday morning uh, can come in here, or that this can just be an, some more seating um, for our own members. So that, and that can get us, you know, up to um, more capacity for people to come to church. And, but that's, we're, we're working on that now. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know as time goes on, maybe next Sunday I'll know more about that and how that's gonna work. But I think that's a great idea uh, for us to, to have this as a resource um, to worship in. We'll probably, we will have two services. Um, worship and Music decided um, that we'd have them on Sunday morning, uh, one at nine and one at 11. They'd be shortened services, and then we will have a cleaning crew um, to disinfect the church in between services. So they need about an hour to do that work. And so that brings me to my final point. We need help. Um, we need cleaners. Um, the ushers, we may need more ushers because we're going to have two worship services. So we may, may need more of everybody to, to help with the services. Um, so if you can help with that, let, let me know or call the church office or let Janet know or Alice know or Bud know. Um, we'll need cleaners. We'll need disinfectant. That's something we're collecting now. We cannot open the church without a big supply of disinfectant and cleaning supplies or else or else it, it won't work so there's a lot of stuff we've ordered masks we have masks on hand so if you forget your mask and when you come there'll be masks that you can pick up here um, so it's it's a work as I said in progress it's, it's a lot of planning uh, to get everything thought out we want to be as, as careful and as thorough as we possibly can so that everybody so that the risk is low. It's a high risk thing for us to do and we're going to make it as low risk as we possibly can so that we can all stay safe. Uh, the numbers unfortunately are up in the county. I just checked that and I noticed that there were 30. I, I haven't seen it before and I've been watching every day. It's jumped 30 cases in one day. It's now up to 130. I looked at it yesterday. I think it was 101. And I just looked at it right before I started. It's 130 new cases in the county. So not, not, not new. Not new. Not new. Not well, 130 new. No. 30 new. 130 right. total. 130 total. So not good news. But we continue on. We continue planning to open um, so that, that and the, to be prepared so that when we can open, we are ready to go. All right. Well, God bless everybody. And did I forget anything, Pam? Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay well. Yes, stay well. God bless everyone. And if anybody needs anything, let us know. Oh, and then stay on for the message of the bishop. That's going to immediately follow this. Okay. Bye bye. God. God bless. Thanks. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew, the twenty-eighth chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a, hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. 
In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. 
and God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.